For me, this is a very hard video to make. If you've been watching the channel for a long time, then you know that I am a big Colin Sexton fan. You can even call me a Colin Sexton stan. Been watching him since high school. Was a huge fan in Alabama when he went to Alabama. And now he's a big part of me being a huge Cavs fan. The reason why I'm bringing this video is because I honestly don't know what the NBA's problem is with Colin Sexton. Colin is a player that has been through a lot in his first three years. He's already had three coaches in his first four years. He's always played on an injury riddle team. and He's always been on a rebuilding team. But he's overcome all of that. There's a lot of narratives that come with Colin that I simply don't understand. And I feel like those are the reasons why he's not on the team right now. One is because he wants his money and then other teams that know how talented he is just won't offer him the money and I'm confused and I think it's because they're falling in love with the narrative. So let's just dive down into these narratives, narratives where I believe like they're just bad narratives. One, the first narrative that he has around him is he's a team cancer. That narrative never made sense to me and it's kind of been a lazy narrative. This narrative came from his rookie year when the quote or the whole saga went down where the quote-unquote vets on his team said he doesn't know how to play basketball. And the reason why I said that, the vets were Jared Smith, who was already out of there ever since LeBron left. Same thing with Tristan Thompson. Then we all know the Kevin Love really didn't turn into a vet until this year. Um, last two years, he, he had multiple times where he had attitudes on the court. So that's what I'm saying. His vets say he didn't know how to play basketball. Along with that, they ins insinu insinuated that all he does is score and he doesn't know how to pass the basketball. Now, we will get into that passing part later because that's also a narrative that I simply just don't agree with. But the bad teammate in the locker room cancer narrative is just super false. Um, when you look at the, the talks that his teammates had about him, it just you can tell it's false. One teammate, Darius Garland, the star of the Cavaliers, said Colin Sexton is a brother. They even went on vacation with each other last week or a couple weeks ago. Um... He said it multiple times on Draymond Green's podcast. I don't know if you watched that, but go watch it. Very good podcast. He said it. That's my brother. Whatever Collins do, I'm with it. That's my brother. And then he also said, other than Kevin Love, him and Collins are the closest off the court. Isaac Okoro said, soon as he came into the league, Collins has treated him like a brother. Even though they, they, I wouldn't say they grew up with each other, but they're both from Atlanta, so they knew of each other. But soon as he came into the league, Isaac said, Collins has treated him like his little brother. J.B. Bickerstaff and Kobe Altman said Colin Sexton is the hardest working player they've ever seen. So that whole locker room cancer stuff where he's a bad teammate stuff, I just don't understand. That's coming from a lot of outside guys that are not really in it. I can name other quotes of other players saying how great of a player or how great of a person Colin is. But like, I don't want to make this video super long, but like that narrative is coming from people that's not in the locker room. So I'm not going to listen to that at all. The second narrative that I have to talk about is... That he doesn't pass the ball. Now, this is the this narrative is it, it's always been so stupid to me, and I think it's only for one reason. I, I think it's because people fail to realize that Colin Sexton is a two guard. Yes, he is six one. That is a point guard body, but he is a shooting guard. You've seen plenty of lists list last year of top ten point guard. I mean, not top ten point guard, top point guard tiers. You've seen those lists last year. And they will have Colin Sexton and Darius Garland on the list, and I will never understand that. How the fuck are you going to have two starting point guards? No. Darius is the starting point guard, and Colin is the starting two. And I think that's why people get so caught up into this whole passing stuff, because they want him to go out there and have a 6 7 assists like a real point guard does. He's not a point guard. He only played point guard in Alabama and in um, high school because he was 6'1". And even in high school, he played two guard. Yeah, this, uh, this tells you how how deep of a Colin Sexton fan I am. The point guard of his high school team, his name was Drew, Drew Drennan. I think he went to UNLV. But Colin was a two. Going into college, that's when Colin started to be the point guard. That's when his passing got better and everything. But in high school and in the NBA, he is not a point guard. Ever since they drafted Darius Garland, they dropped him because they know Darius is a real point guard. Colin is not a real point guard. He's a two. Now that being said, the average amount of assists coming from a two guard is 3.3 .3 assists. Now Collins' last healthy year, he did average 4.4 assists. So why are we so fixated on his assists if he averages 4.4 assists while being a two guard? He's not a point. 
Y'all want him to average the seven and six assists, thinking he's a point guard. He's never been a point guard. He's not a point guard. So I'm not saying, well, naming his assists, I'm not saying that Collins is this elite playmaker at all, but the narrative that he can't pass is just flawed. In games where Darius Garland didn't play in the 2020-2021 season, Collins averaged his six assists. We didn't get that much wins because also we had the injury bug. If you go see how much games Darius missed, if you go see how much games um, Jared Allen missed, if you go see how much games Kevin Love, Kevin Love played like damn near 20 games that season. We had a very injury riddled team for two years in a row. Hopefully we can erase that this year. But in that span where Darius Garland didn't play, kind of average six assists. He is a capable passer, a willing passer. His passing got really better. It sucked to see him get injured this season because in the 16 games that he played, he didn't average the 24 points that he usually averaged, but his passing was actually really good, and I can tell he worked on it. But this whole narrative that he can't pass, that's just, again, another lazy narrative. Now looking at Colin as a player, there's not 50 players better than him when he's healthy. There's not. You can't just find a guy who will average 24 Four assists on 47% shooting and 37% from the three. That is just super consistent. He's uber consistent. And second year, he averaged 20 points um, and I believe 48% from the field and 40% from the three. As consistent as it's get as he gets. Him wanting his money is not something with his ego. He wants money because he deserves it. He got hurt this year. And name me a player that didn't start off the year slow because I know a lot of people are going to look at his First 11 game stats, he was averaging 16. I think he was averaging like 43% shooting. We had a whole new team. And name me a person that didn't start off slow because everybody was starting off slow this year. Everybody. He deserves the money that he wants. JB Bickerstaff said the winning culture that the Cavs had this year, this past year that just passed, Colin established it. And his workouts and his the way he works out, his tenacity, all of that. Their workouts as a team off the court. All of that. He established that winning tenacity, that winning culture for them. He is an elite three level three level score. I wouldn't matter of fact, let me tell you that. I don't know if I'd say elite. Cause this three is mostly on spot up, but the mid-range of finishing some of the best in the league. Mid-range for a guard, one of the best in the league. He averaged 12 points in the in the paint last year. Like finishing, he got that too. Like that's what I'm saying. He's damn near an elite three level score. Damn near. Um now, coming off an ACL injury, a lot of people might be scared. But my whole thing is, they don't they don't really fear me no more. I know that's a crazy thing to say, but ACL injuries don't fear me like that no more, man. We had Clay, KD, John Wall, and even Boogie Cousins. They came back as more skillful players. And if a guy like Colin, that's what he needs. The comeback as a more skillful player, being able to get his buckets in different ways. That's just something that he needs. Like Derrick Rose, he said, no, he wasn't better than he was when he won the MVP. But right now, Derrick Rose said he's way more skilled than he was when he won the MVP. That's kind of what Colin needs. That's, that's just simply, that's what he needs. And then the one thing that those guys ha didn't have that Colin has is youth. Colin is 23. Those guys, other than Derrick Rose, hurt themselves when they were above 28 years old. So, like... Why are we so scared to give Colin this contract when he is 23? 23, man. I'm not worried about how he's going to come back off ACL tear. I'm not at all. I know how hard of a worker he is. I, I know he's in the gym right now. I'm, I'm not worried about that. Now, as far as the teams, I would love to see him on because I don't think he's going back to the Cavs. And I think that's just a marriage for both teams that would just... It will be a positive if they both split apart, man. The Cavs got so many guards. Getting rid of Colin right now while you can, that's just, I would do that. But for Colin, teams, I would love to see him play for, um, I would really love to see him be the starting two guard on the Dallas Mavericks. I would absolutely fucking kill for that. I want that so bad. Um, not a team I'm not to oppose of, the Lakers, but he wants his money. I don't think they have enough to give him at least 22. I don't, 22 mil, I, I don't know. I don't think they have that much, but I would love to see him go there, um, Another team I'd probably like to see Colin go to off the top of the dome. I don't know. Those two teams, bro. I would love to see the Mavs. And I would love to see the Lakers if that was a chance to happen. Um, also, wouldn't mind the Raptors. I would actually like the Raptors. Get some guard play in there. 
I would like the Raptors. Definitely like the Raptors in a little sign of trade. Get a little OG out of know, you know what I'm saying? I, I would like that. I, I would like that, man. But when you look at the Cavs, they offer Colin three years, 40 million. Like, that's that's a low ball. That's a fucking low ball. For a guy that you said all this stuff about, that's a low ball, man. 13 million a year for a guy like Colin. No, nah, that, that's a low ball. And he deserves his money and he needs his money. But I don't want to keep running on and talking about the same stuff, man. This is it for this video, man. Uh, one thing I want to say is I am going to be on call next week as far as my job. If you don't know what that is, look it up. You can probably see that on, on Google. So I don't know if I'm going to drop a lot of videos next week. You probably only see one. But I will be back better than ever right after on call. So peace out.